Hey folks, Wade here. Today I'm going to talk to you about a modification that I'm going to make to my Microlux slash Micromark 7x16 inch mini lathe. And that is to put an RPM tachometer on this thing. So I'm going to start out just um, with the rudimentary parts of this tachometer that I bought well over a year ago and I'm usually pretty good about documenting things but I have to be honest I can't find any of my files or documentation for this so I'm kind of trying to recreate and restructure what my plan was in fact when I tested this out earlier over the last day and a half two days I, I couldn't get it to work and I ended up early this morning pulling the trigger on another one thankfully these are cheap most of them kind of come out of china which this one did i think it all in all it was less than ten dollars i spent about twenty dollars today earlier to get another one just because i needed it on hand or i guess i should say i wanted one on hand uh, i do want to be able to dial in the feeds and speeds on the mini lathe so as I'm working with different material, I would like to really actually have a good knowledge of what the RPM is that I'm spinning the lathe so that I can replicate that later on down the road. Well, uh, later in the afternoon and I was looking for something else, I actually ran across a video that was way down the line in YouTube. And a gentleman actually covered how these numbers on the back here are incorrect as far as trying to hook this up. So the assumptions that I made at looking at this and the actual wiring colors on these little wires here. Now I think I had colored them in, maybe I didn't, I don't know, but they were actually, these are, these have been even further marked, so. But at some point, up like in here and down in here, I don't know if I colored those in or if it came that way, but these color codes that were on here when I took this out of the bag a couple days ago were incorrect. So this is the unit right here as far as the display. It uses the sensor right here. I don't have the magnet with me right now, but the sensor uses a little magnet that you put on the spindle or, or some people put it on the chuck different places, but as long as it's close enough and it's reading that magnet, it gives you one pulse per revolution. And these seem to be very are fairly accurate so uh, from what I've seen and then this module right here I picked this up from a YouTube video maker that I I can't find that uh, that video but this is just a 12 or excuse me 120 to 12 volt converter so it comes in power from the switch on the lathe and then it puts out 12 volts and that's so, you know, some people use 9 volt batteries. Most of these units are 8 to 24 volts. And uh, this, something like this, you can use a um, buck converter, most likely, or you could use this right here. If you were able to see it, I don't know if you can, but it says AC in here and then DC out. So this gives you a DC 12 volt. Again, this works on 8 to 24 volt DC. And... I made up a little bit of a diagram right here so that I can discuss how these wires are wrong. And again, this is just knowledge that I came by and I tested it out as far as the display firing up. Now, I haven't tested this out fully, but I've seen two or three different videos now. Of course, I ran across a bunch more after I pulled the trigger on a new one. I guess it's always good to have a spare and these things are fairly cheap. Now, the numbers go from one here to five for this diagram right here you would flip this around so if you're looking at the back obviously you just reverse what's up here but uh, it goes against what is discussed on this little label right here and most of these are Chinese characters but there are a couple English words on there as far as the colors so really what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the display and then you're gonna have the sensor with the wires coming out of the sensor and quickly, if you're looking at this display, and this clip only goes in one direction. So if you're looking at the display, 
the first wire, and, and these aren't exactly the same colors either. I just put them as colors just to make it more obvious. But the first wire on the right is both the power of the sensor, which is this brown wire right here. It powers the sensor, and then it also provides power to display. And so that's, you need external power coming in. Again, whether it's a 9-volt battery or uh, like I'm going to do with these two wires right here. So the red and white right here, or excuse me, red and black right here, are going to go to these two power wires right here. This second wire from the right being DC negative. This blue wire coming out is only the sensor data, and it goes to the blue wire on this tack sensor. The fourth wire doesn't get used at all, and that's kind of where I was getting confused because uh, there's three wires here and then there's two power wires, so I was trying to connect that up. It wasn't working. So you can scrap the fourth wire from the right, and then the last wire is the sensor ground, and again, that goes to this black wire right there on the sensor. So that is the wiring for this little system. And I'm gonna put this inside of the electronics unit on the front of the headstock. And then my plan, let me push all this out of the way. My initial plan anyway, this is the cover for the left hand side of the lathe, is I'm gonna 3D print I'm going to notch this and I'm going to put 3D print a, uh, both a bracket and then a little spot so that this sits kind of, let me back up a little bit or push this up. So this sits kind of off to the side because I noticed that when I'm doing my lathe operations, I'm reaching over and uh, to the chuck and, and uh, I, I, I don't want this sensor like right in this area right here where a lot of people put it. I want it over off to the side. However, when I do want to get in and uh, do something where I need to take this cover off, I don't want to have this attached to this left-hand side cover. So that's the initial plan so far. It may seem odd on the face of it, but an integral part of adding this RPM tachometer to my Microlux 7 by 16 inch mini lathe actually has to do with painting it. So this lathe spent a lot of time as I was in a very protracted move from the DC area down to North Carolina. It spent a good amount of time after I had put it together both in a storage unit and it went through uh, at least two hurricanes and actually one tornado. So I don't think it looks like it's in that bad of shape. There is some rust. And down here, on the back of this foot back here, the paint was all peeling off and there was a lot of rust. So I just decided to go ahead and clean that up. You can actually see the different colors there. I couldn't find a perfectly matching gray, so I went with a Krylon and it's a little bit different um, color. So I'm not going to do the whole entire thing, but I do want to get this whole bottom rail set up painted one color. You can see kind of a break here. It's not as obvious on the camera, maybe because of that shadow, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint this lower area on the frame and then call it good. And then one of the reasons why I'm going to do that is because I need to take this control board off and actually do some investigation as to where I'm going to pull my 120 volts AC to then convert it. So the AC will be via these wires, the blue and the brown, and then convert it to 12 volt DC to drive the tachometer. So let's check it out. I'll start out this section with a disclaimer. Do not do this at home. If you do, make sure you know what you're doing. If you don't, I would uh, get somebody that knows what they're doing or hire a qualified electrician. So I do have this unit plugged to the wall and this white and this black wire should be giving us 120 volts AC. So I've got this on the AC dial as far as my multimeter. We'll check this out. 
there you can see we've got a 121.5 volts as expected. Now I need to pull 120 volts for this guy right here. So where am I going to tie that in? Well, I suspect it's going to be on these tabs that are underneath. And there's one blue wire that comes off one tab and there's one blue wire that comes off the other tab that goes to this light, which is a 120 volt light that indicates that the unit is on. So we're going to take a reading off of that light and since it's not on we shouldn't get anything which we don't really. So now if I turn the unit on that light comes on although it's hard to see from the side it's even you know I have to put my hand over it a lot of times to see it. So now we're going to check this again and there you see that we've got 121.5 volts as well. The light is on. You can actually see it better from inside the case than from on top of the case. So that being said, I know that I'm just going to take one lead to each side of this, the, the second row of tabs, and I've got my 120 volts. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and unplug it for safety because I'm going to reach my hand down in here. So I'm going to take this little module and wherever I can fit it in, I'm going to stuff this module inside this case. Since this is the adjoining wall right here with the left hand side in cover, then I'll probably run my wires through here and this is actually, in, on this wall right here, I suspect starting off, this is actually where I'll end up mounting the bracket that holds both the display and then probably below the bracket, since I'll 3D print it using PETG, which is fairly strong like ABS, I'll probably go ahead and make the, the, both the mount for the display and then the bracket for this up against the spindle back over in here. Uh, let me get a little bit higher. On the back side here, so with this right here, I'm probably going to set that bracket up like I was saying. That's it for my verification on the electronics. I'll press forward. So you may have noticed on the intro to my video, it says the building of Long Easy 916 Whiskey Papa. And that is, in fact, my whole entire push right now as far as getting things done is building an airplane. And in building up to that, I've actually been spending about six months getting my shop ready and getting the mill and the lathe up online as part of that effort. So to streamline my efforts and be more efficient, I was pondering this last night. And I realized, you know, I think I have some parts available that would make this process of adding this lathe tachometer a whole lot easier and quicker. So, in a very unplanned fashion, I kind of did a bait and switch as far as what my plan was. I realized, after looking around for about 20 minutes, that I had these components on hand. With those components, this box... I went ahead and converted this and I'm just using a 9 volt battery inside of here and that's going to be my interim solution for a while. I eventually plan on putting the 120 volt to 12 volt converter inside of here but for right now I'm just going to use this box and since it's got a battery I don't want the battery to go dead and always be live. I put this on off switch. Now the camera makes the digits flicker but of course in real life they're not flickering. And then I thought well I'll go ahead and test this out. I've still got to look at different mounting options how I'm going to mount it up. So we'll put that up there. I've already got the magnet mounted here. I don't even know how to say this so I'm just going to show you. I'm using these one of these magnets uh, and again, I picked this up well over a year ago, so I, I think I probably bought it at Home Depot or Lowe's. 
So uh, without further ado, let's try this out. I'm going to try to not damage anything or, or myself. You can see. So I remember another on another video I saw, well, it just cleared itself out, but sometimes there's a little bit of a lag um, if you if you reduce or increase the uh, RPM greatly. So uh, I'll play around with that. You know, that could have been for me pulling my hand back. It wasn't perfectly steady. I'll dial this in. My goal is to mount the sensor in this area here underneath this cover over here which I've removed the mark on the top because for now I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just not going to take the time to draw all that up and, and uh, uh, you know, I enjoy modeling things up and drawing things up in Fusion 360, but I just don't have the time right now. So I'm just going to figure out how to mount this here. Um, I would just drill a hole in the back and mount it back here, but you can see there's this this hole right here. I, I may still end up going back here, but I prefer to just do it internal. I'll uh, I'll give one shot of that when I finish and add that to this video. So for right now, this is my TAC RPM, or uh, excuse me, my tachometer lathe RPM solution with an on-off switch and a 9-volt battery, and then just mounting this here, and that's it. Nice and simple. I soldered all that up last night. I didn't take any pictures. I think most people know how to solder a bunch of wires together. So I, I followed the diagram that I showed earlier in this video and it worked like a treat. So this is the last piece in place. I made this bracket right here. It kind of blends into the background. So I made this piece right here of cardboard so that you could kind of see the, the bracket where it begins and ends. With the black background so i uh i cut it out of a pre-existing it's actually a a hanger bracket for framing timber just cut it out shaped it and then drilled a hole and mounted it and then i mounted it to where i basically said i was going to mount it earlier in the video and then again i have the nine volt battery so i'm just going to show this test and that will be it that's the end of this little saga turn this Lathe on, start it spinning. So there's a little bit of jumpiness, and again, at the end, it seems to hang on to the last RPM for a few extra seconds. But beyond that, I think dialing it into one specific RPM and getting it close, I think it's going to work fine. Of course, as I use it, I'll be able to see if it actually meets my specifications or not. So I'll show one last shot of this whole setup with the cover on, and that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.